In the 80s, Sega had struggled to find market penetration with their master system in North America, but in 1989, they were ready for the next level. The Sega Genesis was here. This was Sega's new console designed to compete with the Nintendo Entertainment System, and they were bringing all new tech with an all new sound processor, backwards compatibility with the Master System, and just an amazing assortment of new bells and whistles. They were threatening to finally bring the arcade experience home, something no one had really been able to achieve. They launched a pretty massive advertising campaign to highlight this plan and this capability with the Genesis. They even offered a new ergonomically designed controller for those long gameplay sessions that you would be having with your new hardware. And there were five launch titles. There was Altered Beast, Last Battle, Space Harrier, Super Thunderblade, Thunder Force 2, and Tommy Lasorda Baseball. This was a pretty wide range of titles for various different types of gamers. Sega had arrived with the Genesis. So in 1989, the Mega Drive was coming to North America as the Sega Genesis. Sega had rebranded it. The title was uh, of the console was designed to probably appeal to American audience a little bit better. They had really had a hard time with the Master System, so they were trying to figure out a way to spice things up, make things more interesting and more palatable to the average everyday person over here. This is a copy of Video Games and Computer Entertainment from 1989 in August. And the Genesis was launching uh, around, this act, around the same time. And this is a pretty good uh, article that goes through what was going on right at the very beginning of the Sega Genesis when it started its life over here. So there's quite a bit in here before you get to it, but here we go. Sega's new beginning, and it really was. This was a genesis for Sega in a lot of different ways. This was starting over, starting fresh, and this time things would be different. Nintendo wasn't quite ready for the 16-bit era to begin in North America. It was a frustration for a lot of people, which is one of the reasons that Sega was able to eventually achieve quite a bit of success with the Genesis. NEC was a little late to bringing the TurboGrafx-16 over to the United States. They kind of missed their opportunity. They could have probably beat the Genesis here by a year, but they actually went back and redesigned the console. And I think that definitely did not help them. But the Genesis seemed to be hitting the right tone from the very beginning. There were really amazing games like Altered Beast, which, you know, in hindsight, a lot of people look at Altered Beast and, and they don't really respect it that much. I, I know a lot of people, a lot of reviews and critics I've, I've seen have, you know, they tend to talk quite a bit of crap about Altered Beast. I think it's a really fun arcade game and I actually like the Genesis version better than the arcade. It does do some things the arcade doesn't do, like parallax scrolling which is i mean it's just it looks really nice i think it's a really fun game too really good pack and title at the very beginning and they focused mainly on those arcade like arcade type experiences but as you can see sports titles were there at the very beginning too uh last battle was an interesting game that actually was i believe supposed to be a fist of the north star game in japan they changed it up a little bit and brought it over here. My cousin got a Genesis when it first came out and he actually got Last Battle. So we were playing that game when it was brand new and it was a little wonky back then, but it was pretty cool. The graphics were impressive. It was actually pretty impressive. Of course, Ghouls and Ghosts, the, the Mega Drive 
and Genesis version of Ghouls and Ghosts is legendary. It's actually an extremely good version of that game. There was a Master System power base converter, and this would allow you to play all the Master System games, including the light gun and 3D games and everything on your Sega Genesis, which was very impressive. I thought at the time that that power base converter was actually playing the Master System games on your Genesis, but actually all the hardware is built into the Genesis. This just converts them to run on there. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, so this continues on page 40. Let's skip over to page 40. There's a lot about the Genesis right here at the beginning. It's interesting how they would do that, split things up like that. But yeah, the Genesis was brand new. There was a lot of interest in it here at the beginning. There was a lot of concern about how well it was going to do against Nintendo. But I think it ended up holding its own very well. <laughs> we, we know at one point the Genesis had about 50% of the market share in North America. So the rest of the world um, knew this console by a different name. But it really was a Genesis for Sega fans here in the United States and North America. So like I said, there were five launch titles. And let's go ahead and take a look at those very briefly. And a little bit of gameplay. Let's take a look. All right, first up, we're going to take a look at Altered Beast. A game that I really love, that I've had a lot of fun with over the years. And like I said, I think it's actually a little bit better than the arcade version. But that's just my opinion. Alright, had my brightness turned up a little bit. Sorry about that. Rise from your grave. If you're not familiar with what this game is, your uh, resurrected warrior, Zeus, has resurrected you to go rescue his daughter. And you have the powers of various different animals that you can acquire. And you can get stronger. Like every time you pick up one of these orbs, you'll get a little bit stronger. Until you transform into a beast. And on the first level here, the, the beast is a werewolf, which was my personal favorite. Power up. ugly dude at the end of every level you lose all your power ups which is a bunch of BS but alright <laughs> back in the day this was amazing the graphics the sound, listening to the music, it was like, wow, because it sounded so much better than what we had heard on game consoles up to that point. In fact, on computers like PCs, the only way you could hear sound like this was if you bought one of those expensive add-ons that were not really that popular or that supported, like the ad-libs or the 
Disney soundscape or whatever it was called, there's like a few things you could get that would add like better audio to your computer, but almost nobody had nothing like that. See, here I don't have enough power up, so I can't actually fight him. So he's going to run off in a second, and then I have to continue on because I missed that power up. And here we get to be a dragon, and that's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. I think most people probably either think, I don't know, the werewolf or the dragon, one of those two is probably your favorite. There's a couple other creatures that you can be as well. There's a bear. Um, I think there's one other one. I just can't remember what it is off the top of my head. But uh, yeah, this one's like kind of OP. He's a little bit overpowered. He can fly around and just <laughs> kill everything very easily. Anyway, Alter Beast is a great game. It's two player, by the way. Two player at the same time. What a great pack-in title, I think. It's an arcade game that shows off that the Genesis can do arcade ports and do them very well. It's a two-player game. I mean, I think it was a great choice for a pack-in title. This is before, obviously, Sega came up with Sonic the Hedgehog and everything. So, for back at the time, I thought, I thought and I continue to think, this was a very solid idea for a pack-in title. Okay, so, very awesome game. Let's take a look at Space Harrier 2. You probably played Space Harrier, the arcade game. You might have played it on the Master System. At this point, you probably played it on who knows what. But back in those days, we, you know, we had played it on Master System if you were lucky. You might have played the NES version, but oof. But uh, yeah, Space Harrier 2 was a whole new game. And it was a launch title for the Genesis, so... Let's check it out and see what that looks like. Alright, here we go. Space Harrier 2. The Genesis did not have built-in scaling hardware, so it couldn't actually do the super scaler type of stuff that you had seen in the Space Harrier arcade game. But I think they did a pretty good job with this. Again, this is a game that a lot of people don't really respect, but uh, I think it's actually a really fun game and not too bad. Not, not a bad game. It's actually fairly impressive looking. And just having an, an all new Space Harrier experience was pretty cool. This was not just another version of Space Harrier. I really like the effect on the yeah, ground, the way it looks like 3D when you go up and down, how it sort of pans and tilts. Pretty cool. This was not a game that we had at launch. This is not a game I got back in the day. Um, I wish that I would have gotten it, but it wasn't. It just wasn't one of those games that I got early on. So we kind of missed out on this one until later. It's hard to afford, you know, a lot of games. <laughs> My cousin had a Genesis at launch and he had Altered Beast. And then he got a Mega Drive adapter and was able to pick up some Mega Drive games before they came over to the United States. Like Batman and Strider. He also got a game called Shadow Blasters later, which I, to this day, really, really enjoy. Really fun game. That was a little bit later, but still a really cool game. We were stuck with Nintendo for another year, year and a half before we yeah, finally ready? got a Genesis. So, 
we very much enjoyed going over and hanging out over there. Okay, so this is Space Harrier. We're going to take a look at another game that uh, does sort of a similar kind of effect, but in a different way, and it's really impressive looking, especially if you've played the first one on the Master System. And that is, we're going to look at Super Thunder Blade, because I played Thunder Blade quite a bit on the Master System. Super Thunder Blade is much more impressive. And not obviously as capable as the actual arcade game but still really cool really really cool far beyond anything like these early games maybe they're not exactly arcade ports but or, or arcade perfect ports but this is far better than what we were able to get from anything at the time so it's very impressive stuff let's take a look at super thunderblade All right, here we go. Who doesn't love flying around an awesome helicopter that looks like Blue Thunder? Maybe Roy Shriver's not in it. Maybe it's not actually Blue Thunder. Sure looks like it, though. <laughs> Who doesn't love blowing stuff up from a helicopter? Super Thunder Blade. Yeah, it's going to take that experience we had on the Master System to a whole new level. Look at that. That's really cool. I mean, that kind of effect, it's not hardware scaling or anything like that, but it's still really impressive. They do give you some control options here, difficulty settings. We'll just leave everything normal. We're not going to set anything, but it's nice to give you some, some stuff there to sort of customize how you would want. For a launch title, I think that's pretty forward thinking. Yeah, that looks like Blue Thunder. <laughs> it looks exactly like it. Check out that movie if you've never seen it. Okay, now watch the effect they do for the road. Pretty impressive stuff, how it winds around and it looks very 3D, the way they pull that off. The buildings moving in and out of the background, it's not really scaling, but it gets the job done. But that road underneath is what sells the effect. That is super, super cool looking. And I am just getting absolutely decimated here what I get for staring at the cool looking road now this would have been a fantastic title to have at launch unfortunately again I didn't get this until much later but yeah this is man this is really cool really good colors fast action and you feel like you're flying. You really do get that sense of like you're flying this helicopter, blowing stuff up. Pretty cool. Super Thunderblade. All right, now we get to fight a boss. Or try to fight it. That is just really cool looking the way they do the parallaxing and the road, and it's just very impressive looking. There we go. Made it past the first boss. How about that? All right. <laughs> Maybe I should set it on an easier setting next time. All right. That's pretty cool. Well, as hard as that is, and I, I love blowing stuff up, um, it's still a lot of fun. I don't know if I should bother to put in my name on that one. Didn't do that well. I love to blow things up and I love shoot 'em ups and Sega actually included a shoot 'em up in their launch titles. Thunder Force 2, one of the best shoot 'em ups on the Genesis, a really solid 
uh, shooter if you've ever played it or if you're into those types of things. And why not discover shooters on the Genesis? And let's check out Thunder Force 2 because it is amazing. Okay, here we go. One of my favorite genres of video games, the shoot 'em up. Yeah. Technosoft, legendary shoot 'em up company developer. They have put out so many just ridiculously good games. This is one of them. All right, here we go. Yeah, this is a unique one. Look at look at how you control your ship and everything. It's like this is not a shoot 'em up like uh, just like moving in one direction with a screen scrolling. This is sort of like an open world type shoot 'em up. At least in this part of it. Isn't that cool? Isn't that crazy? Pretty revolutionary concept for this type of game. I think there have been a couple other attempts at games that did something similar to that, but it definitely wasn't the most common thing uh, for like shooters back in the, in those days. It's a whole different type of gameplay than what you might be used to. There we go. I can hold down the button on that. Look at that. Change weapons. fun game. The size of the play area is just ridiculous. Yeah. Got a little bit of practice to do before I get anywhere in that one, but Thunder Force 2 is very solid. It's probably not my favorite of the Thunder Force games, just because I prefer more traditional type shooters, but still, man. Again, I didn't get to play this till later. We didn't get it at launch, but pretty cool. The next title I want to show you uh, is basically sort of a precursor to what you can expect from Sega. Their heavy focus on sports games. Because the Sega Genesis be became very well known as the console to go to if you want to play sports games. Whether it be football, American football you know baseball hockey basketball golf <laughs> tennis yeah all different kinds of sports um boxing the genesis had it all and they made a big deal out of trying to get celebrity endorsements for a lot of their sports games including tommy lasorda baseball which we're going to look at right now Okay, here we go. Let's play some baseball. This was named something different, and I don't remember what it was um, in Japan. But when they brought it over here, they secured that uh, that license and released it as Tommy Lasorda. And I am not very experienced with baseball games. I am terrible at these games. Catcher. Let's see if I can just get on base. No, nope. not like that. Oh, get get ready to see a lot of strikes. Oh. All right. <laughs> Let me just hit this ball once. Oh, that, not like that. Wow. Oh, that was way off. Why did I even, why did I even swing? Oh, 
Just one hit. Nope. Nope. Okay, well, maybe I can do better at pitching. Not, not yet. <laughs> oh, man, of course he gets it. Oh, come on, get over there. Oh, really? Come on, guys. Safe. Center fielder. Please catch that. Nope. Yeah, I'm not good at baseball. Wow. Uh, okay. Third baseman. Out. Finally, I got an out. <laughs> Finally. First baseman. Oh, come on. Maybe if I really practiced at this game, I could figure out how to get good at it. But I, I've never been good at baseball, so. even know I don't I don't even know Shortstop. okay this is not going well if you think this is a train wreck wait till you see the next game I've saved this game for last and this is because this is a game we we did have it was the other game that my cousin had when he had altered beast uh, and it's called last battle it was a uh, supposed to be a fist of the North Star game I believe but they they didn't get the license didn't work out so instead we got a very strange game that actually looks pretty cool it's got some really nice graphics and it actually is pretty fun it is weird though um but let's check that out oh my goodness all right here we go kind of a bizarre story it doesn't really make much sense but like i said that's because they i think they had to just sort of come up with something because they didn't have the license maybe i'm wrong about that maybe there's a different reason why it wasn't a fist of the north star game if you know more about last battle let me know i just know that We've played it a lot, and it's pretty weird, but it's also pretty fun. It does have this really cool thing it'll do where you can, like, when you get upgraded, you, like, bust out of your clothes almost and, like, just start whooping ass. You can do, like, this super awesome punch. See, like that. That's what, that's what it looks like when you get the upgrade. I like the parallax scrolling in the background, too. Let's take a look at it. Let's actually play the game a little. Ah. 
All right, here we go. Look at that kick. Who kicks like that? When you hit these guys, they literally fly out. <laughs> like, <laughs> look how they fly off. I always thought that was kind of cool looking. It is weird, but it's still kind of cool looking. I like his boots. Cool looking boots. That background is just really cool. I wanted you to meet Alyssa. Now you have the look of a hero. Okay. Now here's cool, something cool. You can pick where you, which direction you want to go. Like we can either go to the arena there and fight, or we can go to this town down here. We'll just go to the town. I thought that was awesome. It's almost like a board game. Save the world! Am I the only one who can save this world? <laughs> yeah. Strength is increased. Awesome. So now we get to pick where we want to go from here. And we'll go to that Coliseum. And here's where we have to fight Green Hulk Hogan. What's really weird is when you kill, when you beat him up, when you defeat him, he, he like he like explodes like all these bubbles appear on him and he just explodes in the like a it's really weird it's kind of tra traumatic look at this Ugh. yeah yeah uh. I guess there won't be a rematch. I'm gonna see if I can get this upgrade before I stop playing. What's the matter? I want to become a hero. Okay. I don't think that dialogue is what it's supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, get away from me, rock. This is what they, when they tell you to go kick rocks, this is what they're talking about. There we go. Now we can really fight. Look at that. Look at that kick. Wow. That's impressive. Yeah. Now I can punch the rocks. This dude is so badass he can punch arrows in the air. I just can't do it because I suck. Oh, dang it. 
Who is shooting all these arrows? Now they're throwing axes at me. Well, you get the point. You understand what, what's up with this game. This is how it plays. It's actually really fun. It's kind of goofy. Doesn't make much sense. But it's pretty fun. It's not like super hard. Uh oh, now there's rocks. So that wraps up the five launch titles for the Sega Genesis in North America. Five different titles, um, all of which I think are pretty decent. None of them are terrible, but, uh, you know, they would go on, obviously the Genesis would go on to have a tremendous library of amazing, amazing games for the next several years and Sega would finally reach that success that they had strove for and just never gotten to in North America. I know the master system had been a lot more popular in other countries. Uh, I was really sad that nobody else really seemed very interested in it here. I was very interested in it back in the day, but I was in the minority. So when the Genesis really took off, that was very awesome that was really really good it gave us some great options you know we didn't just have to play nintendo there were other things that were that were out there that were just as good if not better and were popular so that's pretty cool oh i went the wrong way there all right i'm gonna stop here thanks for watching guys i really do appreciate it more videos coming soon of course, more about the Sega Genesis and all the other awesome consoles that Sega has made over the years. Uh, I appreciate your support, and I'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye-bye.